I bet. I used to, um... I used to have certain people that I would call extremely frequently, like, every day on... Like, the same time on the same day every single week. And it was always about the exact same thing. Like, I'd go pick up a friend to go somewhere, and... You know, I would just call him, and he'd be like, I... Hey, I'm ready. Okay. And eventually it got to the point where it was like, there was no need to, uh, to, to really talk. I would call him and he would pick up the phone and go, okay. And then hang up. So it was just like ring, ring. Okay. Click. Because we knew what we were going to say. But I mean, that's a, that's an extreme situation, you know? I wouldn't just, if I was talking with a, now, okay. I've had customers do that to me frequently at my job where they're like, hey, I need help with this. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me take a look at it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's fixed. And right as I would say it's fixed, they would go click. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. So yeah, that was, it's very off-putting for me as well. Then again, I'm also not the kind of guy that wants to talk on the phone all the time either. So if I get the information I want, I'll at least say, okay, all right, cool. All right, thanks. Bye. You know, I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't call people to chat. <laughs> It's one of those things that's like different people's mindsets and I just can't wrap my hand my head around them. I don't understand people that call other people. They're like, hey man, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. What's up? Oh, I just wanted to call and chat. Uh, oh, did you have something you wanted to talk about? No, I just wanted, you know, how, how's your day going? Call me back when you got something you need. You know? I'm not much of a chatter. It's like when I was a kid and holidays would come around, like Christmas, for example, and like relatives would call that I've maybe seen once in my life to wish us a Merry Christmas or whatever. And we'd answer the phone and be like, Merry Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And then my mom would be all like, hey, your grandpa wants to talk to you. And I'm like, I haven't talked to him in like six years. Well, I, I don't have anything to say to him. I don't want to, but I mean, I don't want to be rude and be like, I don't want to talk to him. But it's very awkward to be all like, hey, how's your grass growing? I don't know. I think grandpa was a bad example because that's different. Maybe like your aunt. But why is there a Jack in the Box sign with a right aid sign right underneath it? You got you got to go get Pepto immediately after you eat. It's oh, one. Like oh yeah, I like Jack in the Box too. We haven't had Jack in the Box in a long time either. We have not. Honestly, the last time I remember getting Jack in the Box was when I got my wisdom teeth 
Holy cow, has it been that long? Maybe. Maybe eight years. And maybe eight years since we ate Jack in the Box? Maybe. <laughs> Damn. It's because we started. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's when Five Guys opened up. So then it was all like, well, do you want to go to Jack in the Box or do you want to go to Five Guys? You know, I like Jack in the Box, but, you know, Five Guys is... Five Guys is something else. Oh. I thought that guy was stuck in a wreck. In and out. I've never had an in and out. I think they've got them in San Antonio as well, yeah. Although you live in Texas and nothing really competes with, uh, with Whataburger for fast food burgers, you know? Five, five guys heart eye emoji. Yeah, I know, right? Five guys is so freaking good. Yo, what's up, Azzy? Long time no see. In and out's pretty meh. What a burger is king. Yeah, dude. I always thought In N Out would be meh. I always thought White Castle would be meh. I can confirm that Carl's Jr. is gross. I don't know if we've just always had really shitty Carl's Jr. or something, but they always taste like a burger that's just been soaked in grease. It's just disgusting. Ugh. And both times we had them made us sick. Maybe we just had bad burgers or something, but ugh. What is this game and why are you stopping at stoplights? This is American Truck Simulator. I'm driving a big rig. He's just really bad at GTA. That's okay. The other day I was playing GTA and I was obeying street laws. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Well, I stopped at a certain point. Once everybody was like, dude, just run all the red lights. I was all like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm too used to doing this. What happens if I break the law in this game? Uh, I get tickets. And they're automated. So you can't run away from the cops like you can in GTA. You run a red light and it's just like, you have a ticket. And the job is to make money. So you kind of don't want to get tickets. All right, let's repair the truck. I'm really interested to know how they repair the tires without having to buy new ones every time. Okay, so now we got rest. Let's look at some jobs here. Where am I? I'm in LA, right? Yeah, I'm in LA. Okay. So, look how long that... Uh, and a tanker is. Holy cow. What was that? What was even in it? It was propane. Dude, some of these tankers are enormous. Okay. So we can go back to San Fran. We can go to Fresno. Carlsbad. Or Tucumcari. 
I think I'd rather go to Fresno because Carlsbad and Tukumkari are going to be like hour and a half long jobs. Uh, Fresno will be short. Cheats in a trillion dollars into the game. At that point, you might as well just stop playing. <laughs> You're just cheating in the end goal of the game. I mean, the end goal is not to get a trillion dollars, but if you had a trillion dollars, you could just buy every truck in the game, buy all the garages, and at that point, you ain't got nothing else to do. That doesn't sound fun at all. All right, let's go pick up my trailer. This is primarily a simulator, not a... Uh, not a video game, per se. I mean, it's a video game in the fact that it's a computer and it's a game, but... The main purpose of the game is to deliver cargo. You could just drive like a maniac in Truck Simulator? I mean, you could. But personally, I get more enjoyment out of at least in this game, out of actually doing things properly. The reason, actually, the reason I ended up buying this, or buying Euro Truck when I did, was because I was playing Grand Theft Auto V when it came out, and I wanted to drive real roads and obey the laws. I wanted, like, a driving simulator game, and I looked them up, and this was the one that was getting the highest reviews at the time. So I was like, Euro Truck. Well, it's an 18-wheeler, but okay, let's give it a shot. And I played the demo for a while and then ended up buying the game. But how weird is that that I was playing GTA V the first time, like two or three years ago, whenever it came out, and was all like, you know, I'd like just a driving sim. Matt's just a massive square. I mean, kinda. Matt just gets enjoyment out of carrying his huge load everywhere. You're not wrong, Hasty. I am so full of shit. Ha ha! It's a steaming load. All these red lights. You're killing me, Smalls. Oh, and it's 30 miles an hour everywhere, too. Ugh. L.A. is just terrible to drive in. I'm hitting all the red lights. Sometimes I'll go through a town like this, and every light I hit will be green, and I can just sail right on through. And other times, this happens. Well, a lot of the really small towns are still, like, two by two squares. But, yeah, some of the bigger cities got expanded a little bit. They, uh... They really, uh... A, a lot of the additional space that they added to the game was in the highways between cities. But a couple of towns got increased in size, yes. L.A., Las Vegas, San Francisco, they're all pretty large.
I don't even want to know what they're going to do with Dallas and Houston. When they add Texas, it's going to be insane. Houston's probably going to be the same size as uh, L.A., I would guess. Because even though L.A. is bigger than Houston in real life, in Euro Truck, Houston's the biggest city in Texas, so they'll probably make it that size. Okay. So, we are taking this to Fresno. That's a pretty straightforward delivery, nothing exciting. That's all gray. That's fine. Do they have major landmarks? Yes, they do. I don't know if they have a Hollywood sign, although I would assume they do. I just haven't seen it. I know they have a lot of the casinos in Vegas. They have the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, in New Mexico, you can drive up to the uh, to the uh, the big hole in the ground. What's that called? Grand Canyon. God damn it! <laughs> the big hole in the ground. Wow, Matt, knocking it out of the park. Oh my god. Yeah, I know, right? My descriptors are the best. The big hole in the ground. Are the Are the La Brea tar pits in Las Vegas? Bless you. I don't know where those are. Ever considered a job as a tour guide? Shut up! <laughs> oh, the La Brea Tar Pits are in LA. Okay. I don't know if the La Brea Tar Pits are here either. I remember that on Futurama. Oh, that's right, because they're in LA in Futurama, aren't they? Oh, that's right. Isn't that the depressing episode? Uh, maybe. If so, let's stop talking about it now. Yeah, let's do that. As if there was only one, but you know what I mean. Dude, look at this. A six-lane freeway. Look how wide that is. That's amazing. That's what she said. What are the La Brea Tar Pits? The La Brea Tar Pits are a, well, for lack of a better phrase, it is a tar pit, which is exactly what you think it is, a pit with a lot of tar in it. But it's from the prehistoric era. I don't know which one specifically. 
Cambrian or Jurassic or one of those. But it's a it's a giant tar pit where a bunch of dinosaurs got stuck and died. And so in this tar pit there's like a lot of, of dinosaur remains. So it's it's a really it's an attraction because people can go there and just go to the tar pit and look at exposed dinosaur bones just right there. Oh, you thought I was saying tar pit. No, tar pit. Like a hole with a buttload of tar in it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not much more to it than that. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I would say real big tourist attraction, but I mean, it's a tourist attraction. <laughs> Exposed dinosaur bones, you pervs. <laughs> I just want to look at that dino's bone. Jurassic Park doesn't sound as glamorous as I remember. I know, right? You've been gone for a day and a half and you feel super behind on Discord? I mean, mostly everything in Discord over the last day and a half has been about Christmas, so... Take that as you will. Did you get cool stuff, Hasty? Deep grades. You started an A and you're getting a D like a week later. This is some really steep grades, man. What do you mean it's not that kind of grade? You got Pokemon Ultra Sun, and that's it. Is that is that good? Did you want it? And Lucid gave you a gift. Awesome, dude. Oh, that's right. He gave you um, Okami, right? You mentioned that when you got in here. I need to trim my mustache starting to hang in front of my mouth. That sounds so erotic. <laughs> Runaway truck ramp. I love that that's a thing and that they included it. He's such a nice guy, that Lucid. Yeah, Lucid got me Star Trek bridge crew. He's a solid bro. Oh, hey, Lucid. Irene has leveled up. Awesome. I think he's on... Uh, balanced? That feels right. I like how he is capitalized. Like Lucid is now like a god. Or your savior. 
Is Lucid your savior, Hasty? I wouldn't blame you if he was. Perhaps. Finally, some recognition. And then Lucid said, let there be light. And there was, and it was good. God and his roommate Lucid. Instead of his roommate Chugs. Oh, California. Why is your truck speed limit 55? Ugh. It's crazy to think that the guy that created the world in seven days is just chilling watching me stream. Yeah, dude. That's the way to do it, Lucid. Maybe a little more expensive up front, but man, you're going to save yourself a lot of money in the long run. Said God. <laughs> All hail the Lucid Burrito. What's up, Sidian? That must put a lot of pressure on the streamer. No, not really. He's a cool dude. God is watching you. Isn't he always? God helps deliver stuff across the country. In a truck. We're trucking. We're trucking, Sidian. Making them deliveries, yo. Almost done with this one. I hope he isn't always watching me. God's a pervert. When I'm in a difficult situation, I'll just think, what would Lucid do? Lucid would probably punch that dude right in the nads. Uh, this is not going to work. Do you like that, Lucid? <laughs> That's the safest way to pass. Pass two trucks on the left shoulder at the same time. And go... I always, I always love doing stuff while Lucid is watching me drive trucks and have him just be all like, oh my god, dude. You are like literally the worst guy ever. Like when I go into a trucker parking lot and just 
park horizontally across like six parking spaces. And I'm just like, whatever, it's AI, I don't care, they're not real people. The game doesn't care. And he's like, oh my god, I would literally punch you in the throat. Not even a ticket. I know, right? There was no cop there. Although I bet if there was a cop there, I probably would have gotten a ticket for driving in, in oncoming traffic. I've gotten a ticket for that before. When I was trying to pass somebody and they kept speeding up. The dicks. I was exceeding the speed limit. And for some reason, so were they. The AI is not supposed to exceed the speed limit, but they were. I was like, I just want to pass you, you jerk. And it wasn't regular traffic. It was another trucker. When the AI becomes self-aware, Matt's going to get a lot of throat punches. Well, you're not wrong. There's those times when I just... I can't get my way into a rest stop, so I just dump my load in the middle of the highway and drive into the rest stop and go to bed. I love those days. Those are the best. All right, where are we driving? Right there? Uh, maybe? Oh, I can do that. There we go. That should be fine. Yeah. We're getting close to level 30. Hey, that's progress. Five out of six for tier two. Let's do one more job. Wait, what's my uh, sleep and gas look like? Not bad. Okay. Let's go external contract.